Modeling, Topic 10, Fixed Income, Portfolio Management by Lou Gaddis. References include Financial Modeling, 4th Edition by Simon Beninga. Chapter 20 covers Bond Duration. And Chapter 21, Bond Immunization or Hedging. And also brings up the concept of convexity, which will be used in this topic. Not included in the textbook is the concept of effective duration, which is the third duration. We've covered modified duration, Macaulay duration. The last one we'll talk about is effective duration. And here's a little discussion of effective duration. In this topic, we're going to compute effective duration. We're going to hedge fixed income portfolios by targeting duration or using uh, the duration as an, a constraint in Excel solver. We'll also talk about understanding rebalancing of hedges and yield curve reshaping risk and we'll create hedges for a levered bank portfolio. So let's look at this situation here. Say you're working at a corporation and you have a defined benefit pension plan and you've estimated for all your employees that these will be the cash flows over the next 30 years. And those, these represent a liability for the firm to pay out. And say that the discount rate is four and a half percent. What we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the present value or today's value of this liability by using the NPV function, the net present value function. And then we're going to calculate the duration of these cash flows, how the value of that net present value or present value will change if rates are up or down 100 basis points. And what we're going to do that is simply use Excel's NPV functions and calculate the NPV at 4.5%. We'll then calculate the NPV at 5.5% and 3.5%. We'll see how the portfolio value changes as we change rates up plus or minus, and we'll calculate the effective duration, which will be the average percentage change in absolute terms if rates are plus or minus 100 basis points. So we'll go to our worksheet. Here are our cash flows. Let's calculate the NPV of the cash flows. So I'm gonna put in my discount rate I'm going to anchor that, comma, my cash flows, control shift down, we'll get all of them. I'll come back up. I will also anchor those and close that. Now notice the NPV function assumes the first cash flow is received at the end of the first period, which would be one year from now, so that works out. So the NPV of those cash flows are 68,184. I'll then copy that formula down. I will take an NPV if the rate is 1% higher, so that would be 5.5%. I'll take that NPV if the discount rate falls by 100 basis points to 3.5%. So it looks like it's going to fall if, if rates are up and de increase if rates are down. And then I'll take the absolute percentage change if rates are plus or minus 100 basis points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the percent change formula. I'm going to do the new value minus the initial value, anchor that, divide it by the initial value, anchor that, and then I'll come back in here and put in the absolute value signs or function. So it looks like it's a 6.19% chance when rates are up and a 7% change when rates are down, but I'm gonna make this both absolute values and I'll take the average. The average percent change when rates are plus or minus 100 basis points is 6.59%. So effective duration will be defined as that times 100. And we'd say that the effective duration of these cash flows is 6.59 years. So this is a, a simple case of calculating effective duration. Now the question is why couldn't I use my function to calculate the duration? Uh, the answer is that function only works if there's contractual cash flows based on a par amount and a coupon rate. These are just random cash flows. And when you have random cash flows, the way to calculate the duration is to simply shock rates up and down 100 basis points and see the percent change. So there we go. We have uh, effective duration of about 6.59 years, which is about the duration of, say, a 10-year note. So maybe that would be a good one to hedge with. So there we go. We've calculated the duration and value of our pension liabilities. What I'm going to do is talk about effective duration 
and effective convexity of mortgages before we get back to our pension problem. And what I've done is I've uh, created a mortgage in which we expect it to be around for five years. So I made this real easy, a $100,000 interest only mortgage that pays 5% interest per year. So as the holder of this mortgage, I'm not the homeowner, but the holder of the mortgage, I'll receive 5,000 each year. And then I forecast at the fifth year, the owner is either gonna move uh, or do a cash out refinance or get, or get a new mortgage, for whatever reason, they are gonna mail me back my $100,000 in the last interest payment. So that is my base case scenario. I'll assume that if interest rates fall 100 basis points, they're going to mail me the money back in one year, and I'll just get uh, one, years of one year of interest. And let me assume that if rates increase 100 basis points, that they're going to hold on to that mortgage a little bit longer, maybe seven years. And that, so this is my, I'll call this my prepayment model. If rates go down by 100 basis points, it's a one-year prepayment. If rates go up 100 basis points, it's a seven-year prepayment. And my base case, if rates stay the where they are or unchanged, uh, it's a five-year instrument. So assuming that the mortgage is 5%, falls to four or goes to six, the NPV of that cash flow, base case is $100,000. And I'm going to now switch over to Excel, go to the Mortgage tab. I calculate that NPV when rates are four, five, and six. I then calculate the average, I'm sorry, the absolute value of the percentage change. If rates are down 100 basis points, that mortgage goes up to goes up by 1%. The value of those cash flows go up by 1%. And if rates are up 100 basis points, the value goes down 5.58%. I take the average times 100. So the effective duration of my 30-year mortgage based on my prepayment model, my very simplistic, stylized prepayment model is 3.27 years. Now, FYI, just for your information, you can also call, uh, calculate effective duration, or I'm sorry, effective convexity. We're not gonna do that for this course, but it's the same concept. You can just uh, see how duration changes over time. I've done a simple formula for calculating effective duration where you take the value when the interest rates are up, plus the value when interest rates are down, minus two times the current value, divided by two times the current value, uh, times the change in interest rates. So that's just a, a way of calculating effective convexity. Again, you're not responsible for that, but uh, the idea is you could calculate the effective duration and convexity of any instrument that has these prepayment uh, options for the, uh, for the uh, homeowner. Or the borrower and then I've, I just graphed these three cash flows when rates are down 100 base case and up 100 and what you see is positive duration which means actually a negative relationship between rates and value and notice this now curves down this is a concave or negatively convex function so this is what you find when mortgages and I, I kind of made up these numbers to kind of give me some values that I know are reasonable for mortgages in that this mortgage has a three, roughly a three and a half duration and, and a little bit over 200 negative convexity. Uh, that says that the slope of this line is about negative three in percent terms and it droops down. It's a concave function or negatively convex function. So in this topic, we talked about what effective duration is. It's a way of calculating the duration, the interest rate sensitivity of a set of cash flows that are not bonds. By, by simply shocking rates up or down 100 basis points and calculating the average percent change. In the next topic, we'll talk about how to hedge that pension liability.